Hello, my name is Jim German, and welcome to today's episode of Duel of Manjaro. Today we're going to be doing some upgrades to my DIY CNC router. Now if you watched last week's video, which I can put a link up to over there, um, you'll know that this is a router I built just basically out of scraps, it's kind of what it looks like. Uh, I tried to keep the cost as low as possible, I managed to put it all together for about $150, so I was real happy with that. However, there are some issues with it. The biggest issue with it is that the drawer slides are, are, that I used for the linear motion, um, the one in the X direction gets lots of sawdust in it and ends up jamming. So it's one of these drawer slides here, you can just barely see it down here, and what happens is down in this groove here, sawdust will build up and eventually it will call it, cause it to either jam or just jerk around and make the, the cut not so good. I've tried covering this, wrapping it with various different things, no matter what I seem to do, sawdust always seems to get in there. So I decided that the thing to do would be to, to upgrade those that linear motion. So what I'm going to do, use is this piece of uh, electrical conduit. So this is inch and a half electrical conduit. It's pretty nice and straight and smooth. I actually sanded it a little bit just to make it even that much smoother. The only issue with it is it does have this weld seam here. Um, but the way I've designed the trucks that are going to ride on this, they won't ride on that seam at all either. So it should work out pretty well. I made up these trucks to ride on that conduit. So the way these are is I just cut out on the CNC um, these brackets that go on the end here, one on each side, and they have three ball bearings in them. These are just your typical roller skate ball bearings that are very inexpensive. And then at the bottom they have a bolt that can, with this gap here, can clamp down on the conduit. So I, I set these as close to the pipe as I can um, when I drill the, little, the dowel pins that go through here. And then just for the fine adjustment, I can use this to adjust it to take out all the little bit of play, but still leaving it, it not too tight so that it doesn't bind up. So then I fully encased them so that they, they don't bend this way as it's moving forward and backwards. The length of this is a bit of a compromise. The longer you make it, the more it reduces your travel as it can't get to the ends. The shorter you make it, the less it's able to resist the moments that come across when this is trying to cut. So I went with an 8-inch design. Hopefully this is long enough. If it's not, it's easy enough just to replace these three pieces here um, and remake it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make up the brackets here to mount this conduit to the side here. So this is just going to get mounted right on here. Then I can slip the conduit through. Um, you can see I've left a spot to drill a hole and put a bolt in here to clamp down nice and tight on that piece of conduit. The conduit is nice and rigid, so it'll add some rigidity to the machine, as well as uh, make it nice and smooth for the different travels. So I'm going to get started cutting. I have to make four of these. I've already cut two. Uh, I'm going to cut another two on the router. If I was just making one of them, I probably wouldn't have bothered with this. I would have just done it on the bandsaw. But since I've got to make four, I've got this nice CNC router. Might as well just cut them out real quick here. You can just barely see I left little tabs in the bottom here. Um, that's to hold it in place while it's cutting so the last step it doesn't like shake around and everything. These are a little bit smaller than I'd like so I think I might raise it up just a little bit so that it cuts a little bit uh, a little bit thicker tabs here. So let's break that off and then we can pop out this centerpiece and we have a nice bracket here. I'll use a little piece of sandpaper and clean it up a little bit and cut the slot, drill the holes and it'll be ready to mount. Take the table off and replace those slides with the conduit. So first I'm going to raise the spindle up. And then I'm going to take off these clamps and this scrap here. Okay, and then the table is just held on with these two screws here, so I'll move this so I can get to these. So screws undone, I can just slide this off out the back. So you can see how this works here now. I've just got this uh, belt here attached to this stepper with a, a pulley on the end and I can slide it back and forth and conveniently I can just screw this to the table and it'll drag it back and forth so that works really well it's very easy to do and very easy to install so all I have to do now is replace these slides here so this was a dust shield that I tried to make to this this was supposed to ride right up against the table and prevent any dust sawdust from getting down in there like I said it didn't really work so well Thank you. 
I've now got this replaced with a nice taller piece. Uh, I made it a little bit longer too, just in case this the the belt here in the center I only made to have about a two foot travel. Um, but I figure if I make it a little bit longer, maybe in the future I'll, I'll want to have some extra length. The conduit I've got, I've got two uh, enough conduit for two four foot pieces, so I'm going to make it about four foot long. We'll see how it works out. Now I have my piece of conduit here, so I can just slip it in here, and then I'm going to cut it to length. I'm going to use these nice convenient clamps here to cut it to the right length. So I've got this all put together here now. Um, I've got enough clearance for the truck to go all the way down and back, and it clears the motor and it clears the side. Uh, unfortunately, when I was doing it, I put this one on this end here and then was wiggling around with the tube at that end there, managed to crack it. Uh, these are reasonably strong, but when you're going across the grain, you've got a four foot lever on them, they're pretty easy to break. So it still is holding in there reasonably well for now. Um, I'll put this on there and, and clamp it on like that for a little bit more support. And then once this gets all put back together, I'll just cut another one and quickly replace it. So it shouldn't be that big a deal. So now I've got to cut this conduit down to size. Um, I've got it, it, I want to make a four foot length here. So I've got a mark here. I'm going to cut it with a cutoff disc on a grinder, um, a hacksaw would also work, uh, or a sawzall with a carbide blade, something like that would work just fine too. This way I think is the, going to be the least violent since I've got it already kind of mounted in here. Um, I can do it that way. I've got a piece of metal here to prevent any uh, sparks from wrecking my bench too. So let's cut it this way. On the other rail, on the other truck over here, and then I just added a small piece over here um, just so you could see what's going on. I had I needed to add another spacer. These these trucks raise the table up some, so I'm going to also have to raise this whole vertical assembly up some too. But for now, I've got a little bit of clearance, so I'm gonna, just going to run with it for now. So just to see so you can see how it works. Seems to move nice and smoothly. Um, there's not a lot of play rotating around this, so I'm pretty happy with that. And then uh, in a couple minutes here, I'm going to put a bigger table on here, put a clamp a piece down, and we'll run it and see how it works. Got a little piece of cherry to here to replace this bracket that I broke. Uh, I'm going to fire this up, see how it goes. I'm put some safety glasses on. I also put some little foam brushes over top of these rails right in front of the trucks here to hopefully brush away any of the chips that get on there so uh, it won't be running over those and affecting the accuracy and everything. So two years ago I made that video and I completely forgot to do anything with it. I didn't film a conclusion, um, I didn't post to YouTube, nothing. So today I, I wanted to film a conclusion so I could get that video posted and then kind of do a little teaser of a future video where I'll go over all the upgrades I've made since that video. So as you saw in that video I upgraded the x-axis from drawer slides to conduit with some homemade trucks on it and since then um, I've also upgraded the y-axis and the z-axis to actually be proper linear guides. Uh, I've upgraded the x-axis and the y-axis to be ball screws. The z-axis is still sitting at a, as a lead screw. That's on the plans for the future. Um, I upgraded a lot of this in here to be more uh, aluminum, pretty thick, 5 8 inch plate aluminum, so it should be nice and rigid. Uh, I redid some of this frame here. It's still made out of wood, still just two by fours that I had laying around, but it's a, it's a lot more rigid. It's a little taller to give me a little headroom here. Um, I am running up against the, the height of my workshop here, so that's about as tall as I can make it. I cleaned up the electronics a little bit down here and just generally kind of tidied things up. I put some limit switches on and things like that. So I'm going to be going over that in a future video, um, but I will say that the x-axis has worked out great since then. It's nice and accurate. It slides fairly easily. Um, I put a little foam brushes on and that helps brush the chips off and that's worked really well. So in the future, uh, I'll make a new video talking about all these upgrades and I hope you'll watch that.